Hello Internet, my name is Ace and today we're going to be talking about how to kind of get some more of a classic, uh, nice look to your digital images that kind of feel a lot more traditional than kind of the more digital kind of super smooth kind of thing. And one problem that I struggled with was coming up with with colors because obviously there's millions and millions and millions of colors i mean if you just look at this color wheel over here we've got infinite hues and saturation and everything like that it's very difficult to come up with something that looks nice and something that looks uh a bit more traditional and it's not to say that digital work is necessarily a bad thing or digital looking stuff it's just not the kind of stuff i like uh, my stuff to look like. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a palette that was made famous by a guy called Anders Zorn. And he was a Swedish uh, painter who died in 1920. And he was... He, he used a very limited palette for a lot of his portraits and stuff like this. If you're looking to do landscapes and things like that, this is probably not the most ideal palette, although you can... The primary colours are in there, uh, or kind of Zone's uh, favourite look of the of the primary colours, I guess. So you can mix any colour from there, but this is primarily used for portraits and figure drawing. Okay, so let's look at Anders Zone. His work, as you can see, great stuff. He do super sketchy stuff like this, all the way to like full rendered forms, um, like this, everything in between. Now if you look... His skin colors and everything like that are great. When he goes into the shadows with his skin tones, he tends to go more brown than than like uh, super cool or super super dark. And if we're looking here, we've got like orangey up here. We've got very lots of browns. Here we've got orangey browns. So he tended more towards the browns in the shadows than anything else, and that's obviously an artistic choice, personal preference, things like that. But I tend to like the look of his work. So what we'll do is we'll discuss how we achieved a palette like this. I mean, look how great this is. It's super, you can see all the big brush strokes and everything like that, but it just look at that. I mean, he's a master with values and I'll do a video on values another time because they're, equal, well, arguably more important than actual color itself. So we will look at them in the future. But for now, let's look at the Zorn palette. All right, so here's kind of like an approximation of colors for, let me just grab the right brush here, for the uh, Zorn kind of look. So let me get a bigger brush. Right, and he tended to, the actual traditional Zorn palette, the reason why it was as limited was just because paint cost a lot of money at the turn of the century and having a wide palette obviously they didn't have what we have today access to all those colors and so they had to work with a limited palette but working with a limited palette is good because you kind of get color harmony because all the other colors are within each each color that you make so everything everything ties together and looks like it's part of one piece and you don't really get any odd colors that don't feel right so if you look here, it's a very like bland looking palette. I mean, aside from this here, then there's not a great deal of uh, excitement there. They're, they're very dull colors and everything like that. But his actual traditional palette was like a yellow ochre, which is, is this one here, a crimson, which is this, this color here, uh, the top left, and a black like an ivory black which is near enough a black but it's you don't want to go super as really really black because it just kind of um you don't see a lot of that in traditional work and a titanium white which is just an off white now if you want to look at these starting colors the rgb um things you can either take a, a screenshot of this and color pick them or and the best way I mean is to get like an approximation like just figure out colors that look like this in Photoshop but I'll click through each one so you can see so this like I said this first one is a crimson so you can see here the RGB values 
this is the one for the ivory black. So as you can see, it's like a purple, purpley, pinky kind of black. So it's uh, uh, it's it's not just this dead black. As you can see, you've got the values here. The ivory white, it's very close to perfect white, but just slightly off. Then what we're adding here is like an ultramarine blue, which uh, I think early on he didn't used to use the ultramarine, ultramarine blue. And maybe came in a little bit later, but it works really well on this palette. So there's the ultra ultra marine blue. Then what color have we got next? Then we've got this one, which is like a cad red, cadmium red, which is a uh, a very bright red. You, you saw a couple of like highlights in the work earlier that I showed of his. In fact, let me just grab that back. As you can see in here, we've got like cad reds, lots of oranges things like that in this uh, flower on a hat and things like that. You, you saw this quite a lot in his work. So you've got this one here and the yellow ochre, which is like a gross looking yellow in my opinion, but you can get a lot of great things with it. So if you mix in your colors from these, well essentially four with the, the blacks and the whites uh, as extra, then you're gonna get a uh, uh, a palette that really works. So let's try and grab a skin tone or something like that. So the the, the colors are not, like I say, not going to be super, super um, vibrant or anything like that. A lot of that's done in the values, as we saw in the paintings. It's more like a kind of touching on the color. But it's some really, really great value, um, great colors with this. So let's have a look at uh, flesh. So we'll grab a the white. Let's mix that in here like so. Let me just turn this brush down a little bit. So we've got this this white. Then I like to add in yellow first. So let's grab some of that. Let's stick this in. So you can do this in any software. You can do it in Photoshop. You can do it in Sketchbook Pro. I do it all, all the time in um, Procreate on the iPad. So. You can all all you need to do is just turn the opacity down or press press lighter with your uh, press with your pen. Just get a nice mix. So already this is looking like a, a skin tone, but obviously we have blood and things like that in our skin. So let's just grab the cad red. Let's kind of stick some of that in there like so. Now. We're starting to get a nice fleshy tone in here. Let's add a little bit more of this in. And like I say, if you're mixing your own colors, instead of just going and grabbing stuff off here and things like that, then you're actually, you're gonna understand the process a lot more. And you're gonna be able to not rely on other people's images. A lot of people like color pick other people's images. And I mean, that's, I mean, it's fine as a, a learning thing to kind of see how people approach stuff, but to rely on that, you're going to be very limited because you just essentially, like I said, just limited to your um, to other people's work rather than your own. So let's just lighten this a bit more. We should have a nice skin tone in here. So let me just color pick around here somewhere. It's maybe a little dark, but we, we've we got a skin turn to work from here. Let's lighten it up a little bit. Okay, definitely gonna get a nice one in here somewhere. Let's have a look. So there we go, so there we go. We've got a, a nice kind of starting skin turn. So all I did there, I mean, you saw me do it, was just mix the yellow ochre with white and with a bit of the cadmium red and then just keep going back and forwards on on this little pad thing I had here just mixing in and pushing really light like like if I'm mixing this into the uh, yellow rocker here I'm just pushing really really light and, and kind of sketchy to kind of make those uh, paint particles fake ones digital ones mixed together so let's another another thing actually that is on used to do was he didn't really have blacks as much they were more like blue blacks so he would mix his ultramarine blue with his ivory black just mix that a little bit more in like so 
And then this color here, he would use for his black. So as you can see, it's very blue. Now we can go a little lighter with that. Okay, so we can see that it's very blue. And this is the kind of thing that he would he would tend to do. Instead of blacks, he would use like a blue-black. And again, this is just tying everything in together. So what about on the, let's say, the cheeks and the the noses and the ears and things like that, where a little bit more of the of the actual blood that's under the skin and stuff is showing through. So all we need to do there is just add a little bit more red. And actually Zorn tended more towards a a kind of orange. So let's add a little bit of this orange in like so. Let's find that colour. Yeah, something like that. I mean, he would go a lot more orange than that, even. So let's kind of blend this in a little bit, like so. So as you can see, we've got, like, uh, a more orangey kind of vibe in there. Now, if we want to go even redder for, like I said, in the ears and blushing on the cheeks and th stuff like that, then we have this kind of turn, all right? Now, what about the actual... Now, what I'll do on a further video, I'll maybe take one of his pieces of work like this or, or whatever and try and come up with, try and do like a colour study. I mean, this, this kind of stuff is very important to really get your, uh, get the knowledge in your head so that you can use this stuff at a later time. Now, if we look, he would have his, um, like his local colour, which is, probably somewhere in here, maybe a little bit darker. And then what you're doing to get a, a good light is you're just mixing the color of the light in with the skin tone. That's all that's happening in, in reality. And you can see him doing that in here. He's got the color of the light. This is a very cool image. In fact, if you look at this for like a color composition point of view, very cool image. And then the only kind of warmth is right here. So it draws your eyes straight in. So as you can see in here, the these blacks are, are actually blue blacks. No black at all in anywhere in there. And here we have a lot more reds. And we've got a lot more, like, you can see that yellow ochre coming through down here. So let's have a look at how we can achieve that. So let's grab... I mean, my colors are not going to be exactly perfect to, to what he's using because... I mean, you could spend a long time and get it there, but um, we're just working kind of... We're not doing a, a perfect colour study. We're talking about the actual theory behind it. So if we blend that together, like so, we've got here, this is kind of like the, the blush colour, maybe even a, a little bit more red, like so, and then probably lightened a little bit. So what's what's missing again from uh, digital work nowadays is just just this knowledge of 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 color and what what's actually going on to create the colors rather than just coming here and grabbing whatever we want. Look, I need a, a green. We had the A and it's kind of like ugh, it, it just doesn't look right. And there's nothing wrong with with that. It's just if if you want a more traditional look to your artwork, then you you need to have a bit more of a traditional approach, in my opinion. Okay. So, so we'll look. There we go. This is the kind of like blush kind of color, and then, like I say, it tends towards a lot the yellow ochre. So all we need to do is just blend this yellow into the skin turn, and then color pick kind of one of the nicer elements of it. And as you can see, we've got this skin turn. I mean, it's not the same because I'm not actually trying to replicate this perfectly but as you can see in here there's lots of yellows I mean even in these shadows there's lots of yellows with a, just a hint of, of, of kind of bluey colour and then up here we've got yellows again we've got lots of real deep reds in the in the lips there which is going to be all these things mixed together like this even um even more red than that, I think. Like I say, I'll do a proper colour study 
at one time. But as you can see, actually, there's a bit of kind of blues showing through in there as well. Like this kind of look. It, it tends a little bit more towards towards the purple. So you've got this kind of color in there, like so. And you can go a lot brighter and get the cadmium uh, red out here, and then you go more towards the actual blues for this. But this is, like I say, the Zorn palette, and we we can get all uh, every color you can imagine really within reason because we have the primary colors. So we have the blue, we have the red, and we have the yellow. So with that, you can create. Uh, a lot of different hues and saturations and things like that because we've got the whites and the blacks. So yeah, this has been just a quick look at the Zorn palette. And what I'll do is I'm going to be doing a painting soon. And what I'll do is I'll use this Zorn palette and I'll I'll kind of show how this sort of stuff can be done where we're not using blacks, we're using blue blacks and everything like that. And uh, just sh like I say, just show how these things apply in the real world of painting an image rather than just kind of getting a flesh tone on a canvas like this, which doesn't really translate. I mean, the knowledge translates, but it's it's not super exciting to, to look at. So we'll do that and we'll do some color studies and we'll maybe do some value studies as well because that stuff's important. But So if you want to see that stuff, just hit the tickle my down below, let's click the subscribe button below, and there's a like button, which you can give that a little thumbs up if you want. And yeah, keep checking back soon and we'll get have all these kind of more traditional approaches to digital work. Again, you can be doing this in Photoshop, you can do this in pretty much anything. I'm just using Rebel at the moment because I like this software, it's very traditional based. Outrage is a similar uh, piece of software as well. Okay, so until next week, I well not, not next week, next video, I'll see you later. So take care, bye bye.